Dear viewers, I would like to take a moment and speak with you. It has come to my concern that today is the Can Kale Daily number 17, and I am Keenan Lafferty. And I am very happy to be joining you guys once again on a beautiful Friday morning. It is September 30th, 2011. And today, we are going to be taking a trip into the past to relive our childhoods. Well, for those of us that aren't still children, uh, I don't know. I'm still a child on the inside, but you know what I mean. We are going to be taking a trip back in time to one of my favorite classic video game characters and simultaneously giving you a little tutorial on how to render skin easily. But before we get started with that, I want to catch you up on what's going on within the next couple weeks. I'm actually going to be moving. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be getting a new room, uh, a new place. This is actually my friend's house, and I am living in his parents' office. But now that I have a job again, I can actually afford to get into my new place. So the Kale show is going to be delayed for a few weeks. I will keep you updated on my Twitter, which I'll post down in the comments section. So you can check that out, and I'll just update you every week and let you know when they're going to be coming back online, because it is my focus to get back to these as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, the next time you see me, I'm going to be in my new place, and it is going to be swag, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man, i got some good, good plans for the way this place is going to look. So that is the news. With that, we will be getting started on our drawing session, and... We will be getting the help of my friend, my friend, Earthworm Jim. Yes, tell me, ladies and gentlemen, that you do remember this gem of a game. This is the golden days, back with the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. And Earthworm Jim was one of my favorite games. I, I remember back when you could rent games, remember that? When you'd actually go in and rent the actual copies not get them mailed to you or rent them or play them through some server on the TV. Um, yeah, this is an awesome, awesome game. Oh, and if you look at this thing, see that thing back there? All right, let's go back to the front, the beginning. You see that right there? <laughs> that was actually what was supposed to be. <laughs> that was what that was supposed to be. And um, nobody was able to guess it, and I don't blame you because it was terribly terribly rendered and uh, yeah uh, pretty much yeah it, you couldn't tell what it was but I was hoping that it would look like the Earthworm Gym biodome or whatever it is down in the, the down the tubes level but it was not all for nothing because we made our good friend Ziki and Ziki will live in on our hearts forever so with that out of the way yes we are going to be drawing Earthworm Gym and a funny story about that. <laughs> you might notice there's a little bit more uh, natural blue lighting behind me. And that is because I'm actually filming this the Friday morning before work. And that's also why I'm looking rather dapper. No, I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. But um, yeah, usually I don't uh, dress up like this for the daily. But you guys thought it was just for you. But uh, no, that's for my work. And, okay, so this, this is actually what I recorded last night. And then the terrible thing was, I finished it, it was about a half an hour long of a, of a daily, and it, <laughs> for some reason I decided to close the Camp Studio recorder before I finished it, and, or before it finished rendering, and it just pretty much killed the entire file. So, I, I don't know what happened, but... Like, do you ever just, like, work on something for so long? Like, even just 15 minutes or half an hour, and then you just lose it? Oh, man. Normally, I'd be really pissed, but for some reason, I just found it so funny. And I was like, oh, man, what am I going to do? It was already getting close to midnight, and I knew I had to go to bed. Because my next days just aren't don't go very well if I don't have enough sleep. And my friend's parents were sleeping, and I didn't want to bother them with my loud voice. So, I decided to get up very early this morning and redo it. So, that is exactly what we're going to be doing. So, basically, I'm showing you this right here, just to kind of show you what I'm going to be going into with the flesh tones and everything. And then I will pretty much recreate exactly how I painted his skin. So, we will do that right now. So, 
here we go. We will get rid of these layers of the skin. Let's group those and get them out of there. All right. So assuming you've already got your line work and everything already done, basically I'll I'll walk you through exactly how I've laid this out. I started a new. Here, I'll actually get rid of all this stuff. I started a new document with a gray background. Like I created a new layer, which is Shift Control N, create a new layer, filled it with a light gray. Then I went onto my line art and I colored it in with like a darker gray. And then eventually I used the lightness tool to send it to black. Let's get that in there. <laughs> so from there you just start dropping in your colors like, like I did before. That one's just kind of a, a simple gradient. Same with that one. That one's just kind of like to, to fill in the background. That's our skin that we'll be drawing. Uh, eyes, mouth, groovy, chat bubble. And yeah, so we're going to be starting right over top of this layer right here. This little, this little worm neck hole thing. So we will be labeling this skin. So here is, and, and I use this term loosely, it's not necessarily the, the best way to render skin, or the most right photorealistic way, but... It actually opens up some cool ideas and, and kind of gets you thinking about hues and, and just different things like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to start your skin. And usually when you when I draw skin, it's usually kind of like a peachy, kind of a desaturated thing, right? Like that. But we'll be getting into that later. The first thing we're going to start with is our saturated darker color. So we're going to move a little bit to the red, come down, and a little bit to the right to saturate it. So let's do, yeah, probably about there. That looks good. So grab that color. And then what I want you to do is go into your brush properties. And assuming you've set up your pen tablet the same way as me, you're going to uncheck other properties, basically which takes away the opacity filter for your pen pressure. So what that allows you to do is easily throw in your color and you don't have to like constantly like push down really hard to get that 100% opacity. It's just it's a lot better on your hand and it's a lot easier just for coloring in general. So we're going to be throwing down our color here. And this is actually even more saturated than it was yesterday. So this should actually turn out pretty interesting. We'll, we'll see what happens. If worst comes to worst, we can always go into the hue shifter and, and just change it from there. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm down for a little experimental color play today. So yeah, I was talking, <laughs> it's funny, I'm just trying to remember everything that I said yesterday. It's funny, it, mostly it was about just talking about Earthworm Jim and how much I love that game. And I wanted to know, for those of you who were alive at that time, like what was your favorite, what was your favorite video game or cartoon show made from a video game? Because as you know, back in the 90s, if there was a video game of it, on the Genesis or Super Nintendo is a pretty good chance that there's going to be a cartoon of it on Kids WB or whatever because they had the Earthworm Jim show, they had Sonic the Hedgehog, they had the Super Mario Super Show, you know, all those good things. So, yeah, let me know what your favorite character from video game, cartoon, show, whatever was back in the 90s. Or actually just even growing up now. It could be Spongebob. doesn't matter. I'm just curious as to what that is. Let's see, where are our teeth? Oh, there they are. All right, so we've got our our saturated color, and we'll just kind of blend that into that. Okay, so once you have that down, he's looking a little dark and saturated, obviously. Looks a little bit like a burnt earthworm gem. A little bit like a fried on the sidewalk earthworm gem after a rainstorm. Now we are going to create another layer over that. We can call it skin lighter, skin lighter color, whatever. And then we'll do create clipping mask. You go to the layer, right click it, and you hit create clipping mask. And what that does is it creates basically a mask of what's on the layer before it. So it's saying, okay, you can put colors on top of this, but we won't color over what's below this layer. So you've got this color here. 
what you're going to do is you're going to brighten, brighten it, go up, and desaturate it. So go up and to the left. And we're also going to hue shift. So we're going to go from the reds to a little bit more of a yellow. That is looking pretty good. Let's see how that looks. And also, I, I grab a, a softer brush for this. So grab your soft brush, and now you can go back into those paintbrush properties and kick the opacity filter back on, because now you will be using it. So what you're going to do is very simply, like this, begin throwing in your lighter color, your lighter and desaturated color. And really allow to get a good um, transition, allow that gradient to really, really flow smoothly. And the cool thing is, is that you can go back in with your eraser, like you see me doing here, and you can erase that lighter color without having to worry about erasing the color beneath it. So it's really nice. Like you can go in here and erase this, and the closer you push that light together, the more glossy I guess it's going to look. Like you can see here, see if you push it together, it looks really glossy. And so there's your lighter color right there. Now, this is where it gets really cool. This is an important step that I think is really, uh, I guess, overlooked in a lot of skin rendering. And that is, it's going to be our gray or desaturated shadow layer. And the way that you get this is, you know, with the lighter color, we went to the yellows. We're going to hue shift down a little bit more to the purples, all the way down here to the purple. We're going to desaturate that sucker like crazy like that to this gray almost. That's about right. And now you'll see as you place this gray on the outsides, on the outsides of your shadows, what it's going to do is it's going to give a cool reflected light and really start to give that impression of, wow, yeah, this is looking a lot more like skin. It's because it's absorbing and, and uh, reflecting all that light properly. And then you can go a little bit lighter too, like say there was like this gray, grayish light in the background. You can throw that down on top of it. What that does is just help to like really round the character out once you throw down those extra lights. And then what you can do is you can go back to your light layer and say, okay, I want to put down like a gloss layer, like a like a lighter, an even lighter, shiny, specular, and kick it a little bit more to yellow. You can make another layer if you want. And you can start throwing down those speculars. Make them look a little bit more glossy, a little bit more uh, slimy, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. And then you can just, you can add like softer brushes to like, kind of increase the shine of certain parts. And again, remember the thinner that you make this, the more shiny, I guess, or, or glossy it's going to appear. Yeah. And then really, I, I encourage you to really play around with these, these hues and like the transition, especially from this saturated orange to like this gray. You like see if you can throw in a little bit more of a purple in there. See? See what that does? Kind of gives it a little bit more flavor. And it's interesting how it just can do that. Just small little things like that can make huge differences. So yeah, I'll just kind of <laughs> just kind of throw that in a little bit. And that is groovy, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you render skin. Not necessarily the, the photorealistic way. Well, in some ways, I guess you could do it. But, like, there's a principle behind why I think 
that it does that, why it reacts that way, and hue shifts and saturates, desaturates, and all that stuff. But um, I'm still actually learning about that, so <laughs> we can learn together. And that's the important part, is we are learning to be better artists together. So, with that out of the way, let's see. We'll move on to the question to the audience. My question to you guys was, again, what is your favorite cartoon character? And uh, growing up, or it can be from a cartoon or video game. And um, also, yes. Uh, one thing is I want you to comment of what that character was, but if you can draw it and submit it to the Facebook, I would love that even more. So yeah, keep that in mind. And with that, we move on to our question of the week. And that is, Keenan, how do you change your brush sizes on the fly? I've been getting this question from quite a few people, and I feel bad that I haven't really explained this up until now, but it's actually very simple. So I'll show you. You just grab a dark color brush, throw it down like this, and basically what you're going to be using is just your right and left angle brackets, which is, it's right above your enter key, and they are these things. Uh, they are these things. Why is that not working? Very strange! Try that again. Where are we at? There we go. So they are these things. Your little those things. And what that does is the right angle one, or I guess they're both right angles. Uh, the one of them basically raises it, and one lowers it, the size of it. So if you hold it, it'll make it really big, and you can draw around like that, and then you can kind of click it or hold it to make it smaller, and you can draw it up like that. So that is how I'm able to actually change my brushes on the fly. I actually have one hand with my pen, and the other hand is actually on my keyboard on those brackets, probably about 90% of the time. And so that is how you do it. <laughs> So, with that out of the way, I think I covered everything. I told you guys I was moving, getting a new place again. It's going to be fly, going to be swag, it's going to be awesome. Uh, we did the tutorial. Earthworm Jim. Yes. I want to see your pictures on the Facebook. Post them on there. I want you drawing pictures of Sonic, Mario, I don't care, Luigi, I don't know, what else? Tin Tin, all that stuff. I want to see some awesome old-time 90s cartoons, video games, and I want to see current stuff for those of you who are a little bit younger than me, fortunate enough to be that way. And yes, I want to see those on the Facebook, guys. So make sure you follow the Twitter in the link. Post on the Facebook. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. I'm Keenan Lafferty, and I will see you guys next time.